So this week I went up to Kansas City, uh, visited a friend of mine named Jake. Shout out Jake. He's also got an Alpine um, E32 750. His is much nicer than mine though. So go look at him. I think he's on YouTube as well. But um, he converted his car to coilovers and he took off his factory suspension and mine makes a really bad noise. So, so given that, um, I'm gonna fix it. I got new shocks from him, or new old shocks from him. The SLS specific shocks that that go on these, basically. So what I'm gonna do today, I wanna drive this car tonight. I got a rehearsal tonight for a show, and then I have a show tomorrow. So I would like to drive my new 750 to the show, just cause it's a nice car. It's very 80s, it's very 90s, it's very vibey. You know, 740 is nice, the 750 is nice, but sometimes you just want to drive a different car. That's what this is going to be. So, um, without further ado. Okay, so I got the wheel off and I went to where the previous owner said the problem was, which is here. The problem is not there. The problem becomes very obvious when you begin to look up and see that that is not centered. It's not where it's supposed to be. This whole thing is not the top hat failed that's what happened i'm also seeing that this strut appears to have been replaced with the bilstein which is fine but yeah as it appears that the sls has been deleted from this car probably because it leaks so at some point it's replaced they replaced the factory shocks with bilsteins um which ones it's gonna be pretty fucking hard to tell because these are filthy um, I might be able to get them cleaned up and see if I can get some type of information off of the sticker. But, I don't have to replace the shot. At least I don't think. Um, I'm going to pull it out of the top, which is going to require me to go in there, take out the back seat, and uh, the parcel shelf and all of that, and take it from there. But, so for reference, this is a shot that has a self-leveling uh, hydraulic system on it. It's got that little piece there and then the fluid gets sent from the accumulator and into that and that's what raises that which raises the car. So you see the shock is black, it has that housing this post line does not, yet the accumulator is still there. So again, it appears to me that they deleted the SLS system um, probably just because it is complicated and I like it honestly like I like having it in the E38 but for a lot of people it is a headache so they just end up capping off those lines and this is also the first time I've seen underneath this car so um, I'm not even totally sure about all of what's going on but the more that I explore um, I'm sure the more that I find, you got the rear sway bar link, we're probably going to replace that. The dog bones, we're going to replace that. Uh, I need a speed sensor, so we're going to replace that. Uh, on the back of the diff. And this is also a good time for me to check the diff, make sure it's a 315, which it should be, but who knows. But yeah, um, we're going to mess with that. We're going to clean all this first, because I hate working on dirty shit. And then we are going to go on the inside and take out the top part of that. And see about getting some new stuff. All right, got the seat back lowered. I didn't take it all the way out because I don't need to, but um, to do that, you're gonna pull out the headrest, well, not that one, but the rear headrest, and in that channel here, you have access to this 10 millimeter bolt that holds this on, and then you take a 10 millimeter out of the middle headrest right there, that goes here. That'll give you access to this other 10 that's holding that on, so for reference, it's that right there. That's the hole it goes into. That is the other hole. So then you have access to this and almost immediate access to the shock tower where a problem is existing. Uh, so we're taking that out. So once you pull the seat pillar out, you really didn't have to take the light out, honestly. You just pull it forward like that and then unplug these two wires that go on it, and that's easy enough. 
And again, you ain't got to take the parts stuff all the way out unless you're going to like replace your speakers and stuff. These are fine. But so you can see the problem here. This top mount is fried. <laughs> That's not supposed to be over there. So um, what I'm going to do is loosen up that nut. I'm going to get some pressure on the suspension down here to relieve um, any type of popping or shooting it might do. And then loosen up this top nut. And then that will allow us to move the rest of it around pretty freely. So with everything freed, this is what we're dealing with. <laughs> Shit falling apart. I don't know how long it's been like that. But yeah, you see what they're supposed to look like. What it does look like. Good stuff. These sway bar links are not great. Um at all and the dog bones back here as they're called or the pitman arms as they're officially called um, are also not great they're supposed to be well that's supposed to be a solid rubber bushing around that that's filled with grease because this does articulate just a little bit um and well yeah the car still squeaks um a fair bit even after doing that uh, top mount up there for the shock so I am going to be replacing just a few more of these things just to try and eradicate the squeak, honestly. So these guys are coming out on both sides. This arm has to come off in order to pull them off over there. And I mean, these are pretty serviceable, pretty easy to do. I did not order new sway rubber bushings um, that attach to the subframe just because these guys aren't terrible looking. Um, and I don't think that they're going to be producing that much noise. Um, also getting under here, I discovered that I need to replace one of the exhaust hangers. The other ones are okay, but I'll probably go and do all of them. Um, it does have the supposedly 315 LSD, just because when you move this one that way, that one moves that way. So, good stuff there. I thought this car had a 315, and then when I got into it, it... Um, it has the um, the ASC, which is like their automatic stability control. Um, and usually on these U32s, that means that uh, the car does not have the limited slip differential in it. So this one, based on the build date, I thought it did. And then I saw the ASC and I thought it didn't. But then I got under here and I can do this. So that works for me. I also discovered that the car has uh, aftermarket cats, which I'm not super thrilled about because they also rattle a little bit, which would explain why they rattle, because they're cheapo aftermarkets, I suppose. But underneath uh, the rest of the car, everything looks pretty darn good. I mean, pretty far for the course for a car that, you know, is aged the way that this one is. You know, it's a 1990, I think August of 90 is when this car was built, so everything under here looks really good. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. So yeah, it's got newer fuel filters on it, which is great. And a lot of the lines look good. Um, it does have the bust line over there, as opposed to the self leveling, which we discovered when we did this one over here. Um, so yeah, it's just going to be some cleaning that's going on and some replacing. So let's get to it. Yeah. It's really, really useful. So are these. These are more useful, thankfully. But not by... Alright, this is after the fact. New sway bar links. Uh, repainted the bushings. I did the pitman arms up front. Nice and new looking. I uh, painted the sway bar again. I uh, just took it out, stripped it, um, oh, just did like a light sanding on it. I mean, this isn't going to be a show car by any means. I just wanted it to look nice. I mean, if I'm going to touch it, be under here, you know, changing things out, I may as well have nice things. So, like I said, new bolts there, that slid on there, painted, goes across, new piece there, that's painted, and so on. So it all looks, you know, looks nice now. So... 
Now I'm gonna get these hangers replaced right here and lower the car back down and I am done with this for now. I'll just clean up everything before I lower it and call it a day. Alright, well you hear it or don't. Squeak's taken care of. Um, I went ahead and bought two shock uh, top mounts just so that I can do both at the same time. I figured if one was like that, granted that was a little bit extreme, but if one was like that, the other one's probably going to be that way too. At least it will in short time. So I'm going to do the other, um, repeat that process to do the other side, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. But now I can drive this car. I can drive it and I can enjoy it and not hear anything. Like it's just quiet. Like I said, it should be.